when rural communities are faced with economic challenges, there are two options. Sit back and hope that things will get better, or take matters into your own hands and look to create better times for you and your neighbours. In Tom and Tool in Glenlivet, they chose the second option. They formed a development trust and one of their first decisions was to appoint a development manager, a post now held by Ollie Giles. Tom and Tool in Glenlivet Development Trust was established in May 2012, resulting from uh, the closure of a couple of key uh, facilities in the village, two of the local hotels closed. And there was a sense in the village that something needed to be done in terms of regeneration in the area. But how easy is it to mobilise a community and critically get the support of the right people? So the community came together, brought together some stakeholders, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, came from the National Park Authority, Murray Council and Crown State Scotland as the local landowner. The support of those stakeholders was absolutely key. They, um, they all put in some, some funding and uh, the trust was able to appoint a development officer uh, to really drive forward some of, that, um, some of that regeneration activity. One of those organisations, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, have been involved all through the development of the trust. Fiona Robb, Head of Strengthening Communities at HIE Murray, explained why they came on board. It's important for Hyde to support uh, anchor organisations because communities are at the heart of social and economic development in the Highlands and Islands. And so our place-based approach is really about helping to create sustainable and resilient communities. And our role has really been to provide financial support so that they could employ and retain uh, the development manager post. But why is a paid development post so important? Surely with this level of community input and a willingness to get things done, a group of enthusiastic and committed volunteers is all you need. The role of the development officer is really important because it gives the trust that human resource and capacity to be able to start to develop and, and deliver projects. Without that, you're dependent on volunteers who, who may have full-time jobs, so there's just not the time and the capacity to, to take forward uh, developments and projects. There's a saying that goes along the lines of if you don't know where you're going, you're bound to get there. At the Trust, they're always on top of their direction of travel, as Ollie explains. There's a sort of three-pronged strategy to begin with, um, you know, uh, developing a, a programme of events to bring people to the area, and give people a reason to come to the area, and this facility here, the Smugglers Hostel, which was about um, keeping this, this, this great facility open and running and bring more people to the area and, and encourage them to spend time here. And the Discovery Centre, what was then Tom and Tal Museum, was about sharing what's, what's best about our area and encouraging people to go out and explore the area. So having a, having a clear plan has been fundamental to our success. The, the times where we've had the most impact and the times where we've had the most success with funding and with, um, with, with, with social impact has been when we've been following a, a, a clear strategy, a clear plan. Murray Ferguson from Cairngorms National Park Authority agrees with Ollie about planning and goes a step further to suggest that it's the Trust's ability to draw local people and groups into the planning process that's equally critical. Having a specific mechanism or a body like the Trust to periodically pull people together to draw up a plan and then to focus on delivering the plan is really helpful. We've often find that there's a few key organisations in any community that are really helpful if they can work well together, community council and association, church groups, the school and the key businesses in the area. And if those bodies can work well together, brought together by the trust, then everything starts to work better. You get more visitors staying, you get more people in the community willing to offer their support, volunteering for special events and things. There's no point a public agency like ours coming in and trying to do it. It's got to be local folk. A plan is one thing, but keeping the community on board means that they have to back those plans and be involved in their creation. Board member Phil Rogers explains. I think what the Trust has done very well is it's constantly engaged with the community. It's, it's sought their views on developments and topics at, at an early stage. It does that on a regular basis and when they take one of those ideas through towards a development uh, and then on through as a project. Uh, there's constant engagement with the community, both to inform them what is happening and to seek their views where it is appropriate to help shape the development. 
and for businesses too, it's clearly important to be involved. The Trust is to serve two masters really. It has the local businesses to think about and it also has um, the local community and their needs are, are, are quite different and the Trust really is, you know, its role is to, is to keep this, this whole thing moving but I think that's, that's where the Tom and Tal and Glenlivet Trust has really been quite successful. And then there are the other local stakeholders like the Crown Estate Scotland who work closely with the Trust. The relationship between the Development Trust and Crown Estate Scotland I think is so good because we're both driving in the same direction. We really want to make the best of what's on the estate here. We want to attract people in and we want to create opportunities for the community as well. The plans for the Trust also focus very prominently on the natural assets on the doorstep. Cultural heritage and natural heritage are really, really key um, in, in this area, really, really important in this, in this area. When you speak to people about why they visit this area, they talk about three things. Whiskey, which is massively linked to heritage. Walking, um, which is about exploring the natural environment. And wildlife, so the three Ws. And, and the visitor economy in Tom and Tal and Glenlivet has a huge impact on, on, on the local economy. Um, so through, through this facility here, the, the Smugglers Hostel, um, we bring um, visitors looking for a, a unique um, market. You know, the hostel market is, is fairly unique. In the Discovery Centre, we bring people to our area and, and try and uh, keep them in our area and, and show them uh, the, uh, the range of uh, activities there are in our area. But it isn't all about tourism. The local community has wider priorities and another trust project will see a new community housing initiative creating affordable green housing become a reality. With the community housing much more um, focused on the, uh, the social impact that, that our projects have and um, you know through the through the affordable housing project we, we plan to um, provide you know affordable and um, and high quality housing to to people who who, who meet our allocations policy. But what does it take to be a dynamic development trust that acts to deliver bright, sustainable future for residents and visitors alike? Having that element of being able to spot an opportunity and then once they've spotted it, being able to work through and take people along with them is really important. It's very much about knowing when to say no or enough's enough and press a pause button. Because good ideas will remain good ideas, it's just knowing when it's good to run with them. It's, it's about confidence within the trust. Uh, we, when, when we're delivering the most impact is when we're, when we're most confident in what we're doing. I think the secret ingredient is, is commitment. Be prepared for quite a long journey. Sometimes things don't happen very quickly, but, but never give up because we always get there.